I'm sorry guys, I don't know what happened in the stream, it just decided to die out on me all of a sudden. Which isn't good. Alright, let's see. Tell me about my creations, the cast offs. It says you offered Indira third loss of kingdom for his actions at the Tower of Birds. Is this true? Perception, his words suggest merely scholarly curiosity, but his fingers have paused and the seagull that burns within suggest an arcanid waiting for its prey. New title surge. I am the changing god, baby, and trust me. <laughs> the two of them stagger under the force of your will, a whip crack of psychic power that forces them to their knees. Mimion's fingers clutch at his head, light sparkling, sparking across his scalp as he tries to process the new information that jostles for space within the truth. Yes, you are. He manages to croak. She has fallen to her knees and stares worshipfully up at you, pushed over the brink into sheer faith. Her hungry eyes demand more, 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 and she reaches out to touch the hem of your garment. Lead us, O oh Lord, she whispers, lost in rapture. <laughs> funny <laughs> with us her breath catches her throat of course holy one you may stay with us for as long as you like you have no idea thanks there we go now I got everybody why have I got a negative fettle um What is my negative fetal? Why do I have one? Unequip. So I'm the one with the negative fetal. Something about the cipher limit. I messed up. Take that off. Transfer item back to me. How do I get rid of? Cipher sickness. Crap. Now I'm confused. Now I've got cipher sickness. I think it's what it is. It's the negative fettle I have on me. But I don't know how to get rid of it. Go call, talk to Calistage. See if we're gonna have to drop Alagurn to uh, pick up Calistage in order to do whatever we need to do in the how in the Hall of uh, Relics. Yes. Traveling with the ambling mood dampener. Good. One shouldn't become too ebullient. A handful of words, and you've reminded me how grateful I am not to see you every day. 
and you, Alagurn, indeed, the sum happiness of my sisters has improved dramatically. Now, cast off, if you wish to speak to me, I'll need to retain my sunny disposition. By which means, by which I mean, lose this wretch if you want me more amenable to your words. Crap. Crap. That means I gotta drop him. I'm not gonna leave this on him. Just in case I can't back can't get back to him. Well, poo. What? Man. Thanks for getting rid of Calistige. You have no idea what it's like traveling with her. Though I suppose you can taste even from that short trial. He scuffs his toe into the ground and looks away. I'm going to say this once. I'm not much of a talker, but you know I have questions about your identity. That you're willing to bring me on says something about you. What that is, I'm not sure yet. Still, I'm willing to give you the benefit fit of the doubt, and I'll help where I can. Clear? I can't have you questioning me constantly. He shrugs. I was an Aeon priest. I learned my questioning. You don't like it? You can get Callus to edge back. We've got things to do, right? I think it's best we part. And here I thought we were getting along so splendidly. The irony in his voice is betrayed by the hurt in his eyes. But fine, if you need me again, find me at my workshop in, in the underbelly. Man, now I wish I'd kept Ren around. At least for a little bit longer. My scintillating wit was lure enough to bring you back, I see. Uh, so, my sisters, yes, we will join you. That's it. Negative one training level and stealth skill. Yeah, that's it. That ain't no big deal. That's what the negative fettle was. Fine. Now, let's get back to the Hall of Relics. I gotta go to the underbelly then to Stack Stackney Stitchna grounds and then to the Hall of Relics. I'm getting Algern back. I like him. Man, these load screens. I'm really killing them too because everywhere I gotta go is like three load screens deep. A lot 
lot of loading in this stream. Right, gotta do something. Gotta start somewhere. Right? Right. Now. Go find. Not that. Travel, yes. Take me to the Chicken God Sanctuary. It doesn't even take you to the Sanctuary, it takes you to the Stitch of Breeding Grounds, the old Stitch of Breeding Grounds. Uh, excuse me. Go through here. The Calistate should know something about this machinery in here. So my dear, this place with your creators, he, we must search it and search it. I'm ready. As you approach the machine, Calistage rushes to examine it more closely. This device, your sire used it to maintain access to the data sphere. I must know how. Did did he leave notes nearby? Amnesius. Yes. Use as many as I can. You feel an itching at the base of your skull. Suddenly, your right hand starts moving of its own volition, jabbing down to touch a nearby floor in a frenzied but purposeful series of movements. Next to your feet, a stone compartment slides open. It reveals a leather-bound journal within. Calistage approaches with reverence. May I, she asks, holding out her hands for the book? Uh, I'd like to look at it first. I see she considers you folding her hands demurely in front of her. Is it because you don't trust me with the knowledge it contains? No, don't answer. I will find out what it contains eventually. She returns to looking at the Numenera without a backward glance. Investigate machine again. Well, now what? I need to mess up that two. Take them. She turns it over in her hands, examining every inch of the binding. Your sire always has such marvelous craftsmanship. She murmurs, slowly releasing the drawstring that binds it, it closed. As she flips through the pages, slowly at first, then faster, you catch sight of diagrams, notations, and drawings, all of them of your sire's machines beneath the city of Sagus. Thank you, Calistage breathes without looking up and moves away to continue her study of the book's contents. Yes, yes, interesting. Hmm. She catches you looking at her. His observations on the data sphere are fascinating. Nothing I can share yet. It's purely conjecture. She follows a quick glance at you with a scoff. Dangerous? Surely not. Perception. As she turns away from you, she starts right riffing through the pages as if verifying her statement. Two of her echoes whisper to her. Worried looks on her faces. She dismisses them with a wave of her hand, but sinks deep into contemplation. What in the world? Oh, count it. Into the large central mirror. Of all of them, this mirror seems the most mundane. It shows your unaltered reflection, the crease between your eyebrows as you concentrate. 
and the gaunt staring creatures in the hallway behind you. What? Of course the mirrors to focus on the creatures. The mirrors strain at your bidding and you see the things behind you clearly. They're bony, nude, snuffling at the air through a slit in their swollen faces. One of them wheels around, fixing you with a single hungry eye. It stumbles towards you, feet scraping across the stone. The rest stagger after it, slurping and gasping. I don't want to hurt you, turn to your realm. Your warning does not deter them. Snuffling and choking, they stagger at you, claws outstretched. Oh, great. Well, poo. Man, they hit hard too. Let's see your left ability. Let me make it take this first thing that moves with the weapon range. Use that. Eighteen, almost enough to take it out. Heroic strike of heroic proportions. Hey, I healed four too. Critical strike. Oh, they're whooping on Eritus. Ooh, they're really whooping on him. What have I got here? That's tempted right there. about it. Thinking about it. Ooh, wow, that's big. I'll be able to hit them without hitting him. Maybe. If I get it just right. Could someone stab some healing into me? Yeah. Had to be done though. And I can't get out. Ah. Uh. Fails five transmission magnets. First hobble, the target fails to resist. that. You okay, so she is done. My sisters lend their strength. Look. 
for the mob objects by character can move. I don't need that. I might need healing though. That would be smart. I was calling it moose. Like hairspray, like hair hair care moose. I can spell the same. Choose a damage type and then make it then make a weapon attack, deal weapon damage to the chosen type along with the long that type. That's why I need to spend my intelligence for that though. Speed to get a good enough percentage that I like. is all I get. And it's not even enough to kill it. That's not good. Use that again though. That's better. 85% chance. Yeah, let's do that. Another one dispatched. One more. Now I should be able to take him out. This looks like it was once part of some larger device or network of devices embedded in the rock beneath the city. Thick cables disappear into holes in the wall. The machine gives off a low hum just at the edge of your hearing. Uh, let's try to figure out how the machine works. Touching the etched surface, etched surface reveals a display interface, but it seems unresponsive to your gestures and commands. The display does show a vast network of other devices it must be connected to. If you're reading it correctly, there's a vast array of machines and engines operating somewhere underneath the city. This interface might control them. Try to use the interface. You poke it, swipe it, yell at it, gently speak to it. Speak gently to it, but the interface is completely unresponsive to your commands. Try it again. Try it again. Finally. Uh, I'm at a loss. Really at a loss. Oh, 
now. Talk back with a mapper. Should be able to tell us something. Should be able to give us an idea of what we're doing wrong. Transfer that back to him. And let's get rid of it. Well then, farewell. For now. You won't be gone long. Now let's go and find... Where's he at? Alligarn. Alligarn back. It's you. Reconsidered leaving me here then. And give this back to Algern. Let's give this back to Algern. That back to my character. Give that back to Algern. There we go. And going back to talk to Mapper. Yep. Have you found it yet? Do you see with new eyes? I discovered the location of the changing belt sanctuary. He leans forward and the blue eye begins to gleam more brightly. Tell me about it, he whispers. As you speak, Mapper stares at the exposed patch of flesh on his arm. New lines etch into his skin, unfurling themselves across the space. He smiles tightly and shifts in his seat. Yes, he mutters. Yes. He points to one line. Here, in the void beneath the city. What's this in the mural? He looks more closely at his arm and recoils. Ah, oh, gods, it's terrifying. Even from here. He rubs at his skin, as if trying to rid himself of the mural's image. His blue eye looks anywhere but at his he shivers, bone deep. I don't envy you seeing that thing, friend. No, not at all. He slaps his face a bit, bringing some flush to his cheeks, and smiles again. Anyway, I owe you a map, don't I? He takes a big breath and says, The White Death is hiding in a place called the Cave of Last Words. It's an old themes bolt hole. They say Chilla herself used it, but they don't say where it is. He says, he smiles, persistent pays, though. That's always been my watchword. There's one way to get to it through the Caravansera, but it's still tight and I never found a way in. But you can get there from the underground, the stitch you know. They dug there. They can dig there again. 
I bench up stitch a layer, I can tell you what's in there. Are you joking? Can you really tell me? He stares avidly at you, his blue prosthetic gleaming as you speak. A space clears on his skin, and new lines pull themselves to the surface. He moans as if in the throes of deep pleasure. The stitch layer, yes, like I was there. The eye clicks and whirs for a moment, and then he stares at the new tattoo. That smell, did you notice that smell in their layer, like lightning and dust? My thanks to you, you've done right by me. Didn't give me no items though. Oh well. Uh, stitcher. Now I gotta use the stitcher to get back to where I'm gonna go again. Egg friend checked up. Checked. Whistles. The smell of dust and closed air surrounds it. The creature is clearly glad to see you. Stitcher, deep, dig deep, deep. Stitch a deep dig like promise. Rock not as good there. The scent of a pocket of trapped gas arises, the equivalent of a shrug. But Chikak promise, stitch a move. Human won't travel. I need to go somewhere into the city. The stitch of bows almost scuttling, and the warm smell of cooking rock rises from its back. Friend to stitch a, yes, no pay for you, free. I'm looking for a way into a place called the Cave of Last Words is close to surface at top of city. The creature pauses. Took another human there once. Chikak travel where egg friend won't. We go. Yes, finally. Oh. This woman's skin is white, the color of alabaster or fresh ivory. Flat black eyes surrounded by sharply pointed features stare coldly at you. She wears jet black hair cut straight at the shoulders. Her clothes are functional and drab. Her, claw, her cloak is fastened by a necklace of five canisters, each of different shape. She turns a black device over and over in her hands. Where did you come from? How did you know where to find me? Her startled expression becomes a dark glower. A keen blade flickers through her fingers. You're sure it wasn't there a moment ago. He mutters, out of this allegorn, he mutters, I think she and Calistage would get along just fine. Is it really that important to know how I found you? Yes, because I need to know how to stop it from happening again. And if it means cutting some throats, it's no worse than I've done before. Like I'll do to, wait, no, you're a cast off? That wouldn't work. The knife disappears as quickly as it appeared. Her hand steals out and picks up that strange device again, almost of its own accord. She glances at your tattoo. How new are you? What were the circumstances of your birth? When did you happen? Uh, let's see. I was born recently in the Broken Dome down by the reef. One eyebrow rises appraisingly. So you are the falling star. I've heard of you. Sagus's incessant buzzing reaches even through these cave walls. Her eyes flick to your tattoo again, then back to her workbench. Suddenly the device in her hand, though you didn't see her pick it up. Suddenly the device is in her hand, though you didn't see her pick it up. You're one of us then. Disemboweling would just be a waste of time for you and a mess for me. She spits on the floor and scuffs it with her boot, all nervous energy. So what do you want from me? I heard you might know who can repair a device I found in the reef, something called a resonance chamber. The resonance, a glint of understanding, shines in her eyes. Ah, oh, yes, of course, he would have hidden it there. A crooked grin plays about the corner. Oh, sorry. A crooked grin plays about the corner of her mouth and then vanishes. I know who can help you, or did. She shakes her head. It slips away. My mind has holes in it. One of our brothers took a rusty scalpel to my thoughts, my memories. I can't. She trails off. She catches a hold of the table, and it seems to anchor her. Her eyes harden. No, no, you must do something for me. She caresses the black and jagged device. Knob, knobbed and protruding with an, anta with antenna, 
a sigil reminiscent of your tattoo is emblazoned on it. This is Tash's Murcaster. I want you to enter his mur and find out what you can about the Jacques. I'm convinced. I'm convinced that's the key. What's a Murcaster? Huh, am I really the first one to say the word to you? Oh, you're in for a surprise, dear brother. Every cast-off has one, just like every cast-off has this. She taps the tattoo on your head. No one knows what they're for. Edoras used to think they were a byproduct of the transfer process, just like us. She seems lost in thought for a moment. Then she shakes her head. Wherever they came from, they can be used like a kind of temporal viewer. You relive an event in the life of the cast-off whose murcaster it is. That event is called a mur. Oh, that's a lot to try to choke down all at once. Uh, if the yak is a key, what does it unlock? Her brow furrows confused for a moment. She curses. If I knew that, I wouldn't need your help, would I? She let out. She lets out a long sigh. He stole that memory from me. All right. If you can find it for me, it will all come back. All of it. How do I enter a mur? An almost palpable hunger fills her eyes, a yearning. Hold the murcaster. You'll feel the tug immediately. Don't resist. Empty your mind and let the tides pull you into the murcaster. She collects herself. Then just watch him. Watch for the yacht. When you see what he's done with it, pull your mind away from Tasha's and tell me what you saw. Oh, and don't try to change anything, she says, almost as an afterthought. Eh, I'll do it. She plucks Tasha's murcaster from the table. She looks at it, at you, and back at the device. She licks her lips as if weighing her options. And then, before she can hesitate anymore, slaps it into your hands. It's, a, it's surprisingly heavy. Do it, she says, her voice heavy. Find the yacht. Bring me my answer. You focus on the device and you feel something tugging at your mind. Everything is wrong. Tash's body, yours now, clings like a wet cloak. The world is too bright for nighttime. Everything is too clear. Distance is too close. Edges too sharp. Memories like blood, flies, buzz around your head, whizzing away before you can catch them. Hard ridden, a neen, heave their flanks and huff behind you. Like you, they've gone too long without rest. And there's Matkina, a much newer Matkina, as drawn by a pandering portrait, por portraitist. Too soft, too fresh, too pretty, all wrong. On the wastes, you see the light of campfires, and in the humble village before you, a bigger, brighter fire burns. It's a pyre. Inside, a body that's too large burns too slowly. Greasy coals of smoke rise into the night. Villagers circle the bonfire, wailing and shaking. The headman's rough voice continues the ritual. From exile you are released. Among the mourners some echo, you are released. He throws a handful of powder into the fire, metal salts perhaps, and a spray of shining embers rises into the night, mostly gold, some green, some purple. From wrath you are released, they echo him. As the embers float out toward the plains and fade among the stars and campfires, you hear Matkina whisper reverently, you are released. Uh, let's see. Perception stare at the distant campfire. Let's see, try to see what they are. We got five. That'll leave me with three. You squint your unnatural eyes and focus into the pyre, the village. Everything else fades away. At last, the blurry campfires resolve into something crisper, and you see the faint shadows of men around them, men in long coats and broad hats, painstakingly cleaning their chisels and daggers. There are perhaps a hundred of them. Matkina sees you staring and grunts. Sand knights. From her tone, it's obvious that they're no friends of hers or yours. Matkina, listen to me. We need to find the... Y'all can protect your memories. Find the what? Matkina stares at you dumbfounded, and then she shakes her head. Have a little respect, ta ta Tosh. Tash? Tash. 
This is my home. We're here to save people I've known for years. A moment later, she adds, Not to mention the only danger to memories around here is you, Tash. Try your title surge on me and I'll burn those fancy eyes right out of your skull. There's a smile on her face. Like this isn't the first time Tash has teased her for, for that. She's promised a grisly fate in response. Just wait until the ritual is finished. As the body burns and the mourners chant, you wait in the shadows at the edge of the village. At last the corpse is consumed and the headman gives a final cry. To the distant dark, you are released. The villagers echo him and drift away, leaving him alone beside the smoldering pyre. Matkina, with a hiss and a gesture, leads you over. Uh, uh, he sniffs the air at the sound of your approach and with a broad smile calls out, Kina! His eyes are large, milky marbles. He puts hands on her shoulders. You return in unpleasant times. She touches his cheek. I return because the times are unpleasant, Ning. Without another word, the three of you leave from the fire and enter Ning's dark hut. Ning's home is humble and small, hardly furnished and wholly undecorated. On entering, he lowers his weary bulk onto a hassock and gestures towards similar cushions for you and Matkina, then begins without preamble. They hung him from a tree, old Garib, took their daggers to him, called it pruning, blind to others' expressions, he has become obl oblivious to his own, and he wears his pain and anger nakedly. With a grunt, he continues, they sent him home by skimmer along with the compact they made to the plains people. He waves at the crumpled sheet of paper on the floor. Tick, read it to me. They promise to put an end to our menace, Kina. He shakes his head. Why? We've always paid the blood price for whatever harm we've done. You know that. They know that. Yes, Makina says softly, but the Sand Knights won't take shins. You know that, she grunts. The militia is here to help, Ning. You are who we stand for. The small, the threatened, the hunted. That's who we are, too. She takes his hand. Come away. If you tell the Knights you're going, they won't force a fight. They have bigger, bag bigger battles ahead of them, believe me. This is our place, Kina. Pi Reckon will give you a home. Trust her. Ning is silent. Uh, let's see. Persuasion. Let's try to persuade this guy. He heaves a heavy sigh. Maybe that's true, stranger. This hill, this village, it's no more our home than anywhere else in the world. Then he shakes his head. But we can't just go. But Kina answers her voice soft but insistent. Ning, I know this is your home. It was my home too, but it's not safe here. Paj Reckon has set aside land for all of you. Deep inside our territory, where we can protect you. It's not so simple, he answers. Not so easy. Plains people cannot understand. Matkina hisses in frustration and gives you a look. It seems she is hoping you can move the stubborn old fool. Let's do persuasion again. The only time it's too late to start a new life is when you're dead. Give your people a chance to survive. Okay, God. Leaves me with one intelligence left. Ning nods slowly. You're right, of course, even if you've got the manners of a Marger mar marauder. After a minute, he turns his blind eyes to Makina. But we can't go without the yonk. The what? Makina asks. Up the hill behind the gate. The cave's been sealed for generations. Inside the inside is the yonk. It's what helps us keep our worst instincts inside. If we leave its song, he trails off, gesturing to the pyre outside. He sniffs the air, then nods his head, his head again. I'll tell you now how to open the gate, he describes, how each lock must be disarmed, repeating it until he's sure you both remember. Now, he says, you alone of the plains people know how to open the gate. You work your way up the terraced hillside, leaving Ning to, his, to make his case to his people. In the distance, you see that the Sand Knights are on the move, riding hard toward Non Village. Ning will need to make his case to them, too. When you arrive at the cave and it's when you arrive at the cave and its huge ancient gateway, Matkina shakes her head. For years I wondered about this, she says. The hill people tell a fable that the first men and women came out of here. They said the gate would only open when it was time for people to disappear. She shrugs. 
one way to keep kids from poking around us and disturbing the yonk, the yonk, I guess. Something she said stirs your mind, and your memories jingle like a wind chime. Uh, try to dredge up memories. Oh, man. 50-50 shot. Good. At once, a glaring light shines over your mission, as painful as it is revealing. You're not here to help Paj Reckon save a whole village. You're here to help Paj destroy it. She knew the villager's secret, knew about the yacht. Most importantly, she knew the Sand Knights would come, knew about their compact. The plan isn't to take the villagers out of the Knights' way. In fact, it depends on causing the very battle Makina promised would be averted. When the Knights arrive, Paj will destroy the Yawk, forcing the hill people into their feral state, unleashing them upon the Knights, weakening one of the malicious foes. And Paj is coming in person to see that it all goes right. Uh, let's do that. You hurriedly relate your memory of Paj's plot, how she and an armed band will be waiting to take the Yawk and destroy it in order to unleash the Terra Tamorphs upon the Sand Knights in a living trap. At a certain level, the betrayal is so audacious, the plot so callous, that it is unbelievable. And at first, Makina is incredulous, but then her face hardens. Something's changed in you, Tash. For the better, you care. She takes you, she takes you hand. <laughs> Thank you. Then she scans the horizon for Paj, and so do you, but there's no sign of her. We need to get as far away as we can, she says decisively. Draw Paj off, finding time to negotiate with the Sand Knights and keep them from the yacht. You're barely a hundred meters up the hillside before a deafening shriek fills the air, and seven people seem to drop out of the sky. One of them is a woman you know immediately to be Paj Reckon. The others must be her bodyguard, tattooed cast-offs with drab armor, mismatched weapons, and the languid readiness of predators. Despite the surprise, Madkina flings a knife before they even hit the ground, and it slips between the plates and one glaives' his armor. She's throwing another when a beam of light envelops her, trapping her in a field of energy. As Madkina thrashes, uh, thrashes about, her attention is clearly focused on her giving you an opening, slight as it may be. I can't try to reason. I don't have any intelligence. I try to run. Attack. You rush forward knowing that you have only an instant until the killer's eyes and arms are turned on you. The instant is shorter than you expect, and it is the last you know. Pain engulfs you. Your body is flung backwards into the gate, a smoldering ruin that has just enough consciousness to know that this is the end. And then it's over, and you're sloughing off Tash's body, Tash's mind, and all its dark. And all is dark. I'm ready to learn something new. As your consciousness rises from the shadow of the myrrh, something clicks in your mind. Something has changed deep inside you, but what? Matkina stares at you, the shock painfully obvious on her face. What? What did you do? I remember Tash cutting me. I see the holes in my mind. I remember him forcing me to the ground, tearing out my history with the tide, with his tides. But I have other memories now. They're they're real. Tash didn't do it. I saw him shot with an energy bolt. He was dead. He couldn't violate me. But he did try, didn't he? She holds her head in her hand, shaking, her voice becoming thick. The two strands of memory, this is pulling me apart. She looks up at you, tears streaming down her cheeks. No, it's pulling me back together. I remember now. That hole is, it's almost gone. You changed reality. You changed it. She stands, drying her tears with her sleeves. I don't know if you meant to do that, but you've done more than your part of the deal. You asked about the resonance chamber. I know it. Mazoff's the guy you want. He can fix anything. He might e have even helped design the chamber you're talking about. Your best bet is to look for him in the cast-off sanctuary. Mail of a uh, vest. Can you take me there? I can use your help. I'll take you, but don't expect me to hold your hand. Probably be better that I bring you personally anyway. Keep an eye on you. Make sure you don't get lost or killed. She walks to her table and unrolls a map of the Sagas Protectorate. We're not going to find it by walking there. The entrance is a secret, known only to our kind, here. She points to a spot on the map, many kilometers to the northeast of Sagas Cliffs. 
the Valley of Dead Heroes. There's a hidden portal in the necropolis. And in case something happens to me, memorize this. She writes the numbers 3431 down on a slip of paper, holds it in front of your eyes for several seconds, then crumples it in her hand. It's a code. It'll make sense when we get to Necropolis. We'll need an airship to get to the valley. That ladder leads to the caravansary. We should be able to hire a vessel there without too much difficulty. With a glance around the cave, she says, I can't say I'll be sad to leave this behind. I'm ready to learn something new. Did I just get two levels out of that? Seems like I probably did. All right, so advanced. Oh, advanced. Increase the da, 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 age in the pool of your choice. I'm using a lot of intellect, so let's do that. I need rest. You reached here too, yeah. Deal maker, inspiring presence, and I get to pick one of these. Just one. Golly. Warp dash, teleport to a point, and attack all enemies within short range of the point. Enemies that fail to resist. Blah, blah, blah. Resourceful. Gain plus one training level and cipher use skill. Uh, automatically succeed on the next persuasion, deception, or intimidation task. Active until next sleep. But it takes three intellect. I could use three intellect. Uh, I don't know. Let me see. Uh. Quick fingers are smashing attack. Illusory warrior. Summon a psychic construct that helps you flank your enemies. This character can only summon one illusory warrior at a time. Uh, yeah, I'll take that. Select a skill to increase. Ooh, concentration. Yes. There. Yay! Now I don't have any negative fettles. Now, Alagurn needs to advance. Uh, let's see. He needs a little bit more speed, I think. Cancel out of that. Let me look at something. Okay, he's got... Whoop, there we go. That, that takes might. So as long as I'm keeping that on him, and as long as I use my weapons, I can not worry about speed as much. Come on. There we go. Now, advance. Increase stat pools. Two points remaining. Let's go into might and intellect. I need one speed. Can't put any in speed. Back right here, increase that pool. So he can't get any more than two speed. At least at this point he can't. Feel stronger now. Well, okay then. She's got perception quick fingers, stealth, light weapons. Cool. She's got some cool stuff. She's already tier two. All right. Okay, that is, yeah, that's a glitch. <laughs> Ready. Oddity. Moss. That's it. Yes. Now. 
Though weathered, the rungs on this ladder are firm and strong. At the top of the ladder, you can see a closed hatch and can also discern the levers that hold the hatch snugly closed. Thin the ladder. All right, hung up at 72, like always. Lucky number 72. Doesn't get really get hung up, it just takes forever to get through that. Huh, silver or still wondering about them. But, all right, I think I'm gonna wrap it up for today on that note. Um, hopefully after I save and quit out, that glitchy window right there on the right-hand side of the screen will disappear, because if it doesn't, then I'm gonna be really irritated. But anyway, that's gonna wrap it up for me for today. Uh, if you guys would, please um, follow, go on my, uh, uh, under my information on my channel, and you can find me on Twitch, or you can find me on Twitter and on YouTube, uh, Torless Plays. Uh, just look up Torless Plays on both of those, you'll be able to find me. Uh, I also have a Facebook, it's not very, uh, I just started up, it's uh, Torless. You, username Torless. So, uh, you haven't noticed, you don't have a yeah, just go on all there, you follow me, and you'll be able to know when and what time I'm going to be streaming. My schedule on my channel info it hasn't been updated yet, so uh, I will get around to updating that hopefully today, today after I get off of here. But uh, until next time, guys, um, thank y'all for coming out. Um, and thanks for just being your awesome selves. See you next time. Bye, guys.